Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. Today is the critical day. The perihelion of interstellar object 3i Atlas is closest approach to the sun. And well, there's a few possibilities as to what could occur now and going forward into the future. It could continue along its trajectory just like normal, effectively A, it's some sort of space rock or interstellar comet of unusual properties. B, it could perform an Oberth maneuver, which means it could change its trajectory using that gravitational slingshot of the sun. It puts on a really big reverse thrust sequence. It could redirect to Earth. It would have to do a pretty severe reverse thrust to do that based off of our orbital alignments, but it's possible, or it could do a very slight Oberth maneuver, if it is of alien or technological origin, to redirect to Jupiter and its moon system, which is what I explored in this video here. Definitely give that a watch. If 3i Atlas is of alien or technological origin, that is what I think is the most likely outcome for it to do. But even if it doesn't do any of these things, and that is my base case, it still has some very interesting things that it is going to participate in over the next few months, specifically in early January. It has its closest approach to Earth on December 19th. And then we have this incredible planetary geometry that forms on the 6th through 10th of January. Specifically, January 9th looks like the most precise alignment. And well, 3i Atlas is pretty much participating in this and the alignment of the plants itself lines up with where we first observed 3i Atlas coming out of the constellation of Sagittarius. So in this video, we are going to explore what comes next after this perihelion of 3i Atlas, which looks like it's going to be even crazier than what has already happened. We'll begin by looking at a 3D view of our solar system as provided by the Sky Live. This is linked in the video description if you want to play with this yourself. And this is set for today, the 29th of October, the perihelion of interstellar object 3i Atlas. Here we see our inner solar system and we also see out to Jupiter. We even see Uranus there behind us. There is our unusual interstellar visitor and this is its perihelion. So you see that it is as closest approach to the sun, just about 1.36 astronomical units. The distance from the Earth to the sun is one astronomical unit. You can see that Earth and 3i Atlas are actually pretty far apart. And if it was to perform any sort of Oberth maneuver that causes it to go like this, meaning it would have to put on a reverse thrust to slow down, so then gravity would swing it around more like this, it would have to do a pretty significant uh, reverse thrust sequence to do that. If we go forward in time, we do see that the Earth is moving forward in its orbit, but still it would have to be a pretty significant sequence. So if we don't start observing 3i Atlas around Thanksgiving or so, we know we got a problem. Don't think that's the most likely scenario, but regardless, it's certainly a possibility that could happen. Now, if we go back to our perihelion here, we see that it has this trajectory cutting through the orbit of Jupiter. It will be slightly below the ecliptic plane there, unless again, it redirects that. But let's go forward now and we'll just hit play and we'll see that it is fairly close to intersecting Jupiter. It would just have to accelerate slightly at the perihelion to perform that Oberth maneuver to actually then deflect a little bit further out and reach Jupiter, which is where you have the moons Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, perfect places for colonization if you're interested in doing that. But here's where things get most interesting in my mind, okay? So we are right here set for January 1st, and you'll notice that we start to have this alignment between the planets, right? All the inner planets and Jupiter, which is the big heavyweight in our solar system. Let's go forward to the 9th of January and look at how that alignment really gets precise at that time. We have Mars, Venus, Mercury, Sun, Earth, Jupiter, and 3i Atlas is pretty close to that alignment. As you see, we really zoom out and it's pretty darn close. At least it's there, whereas if 3i Atlas didn't fly into our solar system, it wouldn't be there at all. So that's really how I'm looking at this. It's pretty well participating in it, and it's right basically on the ecliptic plane at that moment in time as well. You don't get these sort of planetary alignments all that often. That is quite rare. We've been talking about this for more than a year on and off on the channel, and this looks very, very significant because just of how you get those aligned gravitational vectors and also how that alters the electromagnetic circuit, you could say, of the entire solar system. 
In addition to that, you have other alignments as well. For example, here we see Uranus and also Sedna. Sedna nearly at its perihelion. It goes out to nearly 1,000 astronomical units and its perihelion is 2076. Uranus is also in this heliocentric alignment with Sedna. And because this is early 2026, you'll notice that we have nearly a perfect alignment between Saturn and Neptune because they are performing their great conjunction in late February of 2026. So you have that alignment as well. So there's a lot happening here. There's one more alignment to check out here as well. And that is the alignment between 3i Atlas and Pluto. So you have this grouping of the planets because they're all close to the sun and the sun and 3i Atlas makes this line going there for Pluto. So there is some really significant planetary geometry that is active at the beginning of 2026, specifically around the 4th of January through about the 12th or so, that first 15 days. And 3i Atlas is participating in that very clearly. Let's check out our sky map for this alignment because then it gets even crazier. So here we have our application solar system scope, which allows us to see the planets, the geometry, everything like, just like the sky live, but it also adds in the constellations, the asteroid belt, and a few other things. So this is a really useful tool. This is linked on the Earth Evolution website, www.earthevolution.com slash energy analytics. You can open that up there for free. So we see our alignment, Mars, Venus, Mercury, Sun, Earth, Moon. The Moon's also pretty much in this as well. Jupiter right there. This, the constellations are key. So here we see that Jupiter there is at the end of Gemini, starting to get close to Cancer. It's at the end of Gemini. What's opposite Gemini? It's Sagittarius. And oh wait, isn't that like where 3 i Atlas flew out of? Yes, that is. Here we have the constellation of Sagittarius. And we see this alignment here basically is perfect as to where 3 i Atlas first flew in. And we also see Pluto there at the very beginning of Capricorn, 3i Atlas flew in right from this zone right there. We can look at our Solarium view to see exactly where 3i Atlas flew in, and we see that this alignment is effectively cutting right to that zone, and Pluto is also very close to it. So not only do we have 3i Atlas participating in this historic planetary alignment here, Jupiter and Earth on one side, Jupiter being the big heavyweight, Earth being the most massive planet in the inner solar system, having a magnetic field, Jupiter having the strongest magnetic field. On the other side, you get Mercury, Venus, and Mars, all of them adding their weight together. You also have 3i Atlas fairly close by in the asteroid belt, pretty much in alignment with this. And you have this alignment in that same vector direction of where 3i Atlas originally flew in from, and Pluto also about as close to that original vector as 3 Atlas originally flew in from. And then that's where the wow signal came from. And that's also the center of our Milky Way galaxy where you have the majority of the gravity and also energy contained within the entire galaxy. So there's just a lot of little clues and hints here that this is a very, very significant alignment. If we just talk about the archetypal uh, influences here for a moment, Sagittarius is all about exploration, adventure, free will and also higher education, learning, faith, and more. And then we have Gemini here being connected to technology and being connected to uh, also learning, but from a more analytical standpoint. So we have this influence of 3i Atlas and the plants also aligning with where are we going from a deeper spiritual level and how is perhaps technology, AI, and the digital revolution that we're in right now going to assist us with that or perhaps also hold us back from that. That is uh, one interpretation you can make based off of the archetypal influences. But we also see crazy alignments like this during key events. I'll just highlight one of them. The, the most significant, I would say, would be the Carrington event. So that was a big, big solar storm. Around September 3rd, 1859, all those flares came in early September. And well, look at this. We have Earth, Mercury, Sun, Venus, Mars, Saturn. So this time it's Saturn, not Jupiter, and it's not a perfect line. It's a little bit of a bent line. This is a sacred geometry still though, those of you who know will know. And you can even kind of curve this out too if you include Ceres and Neptune going like this. So really incredible planetary geometry that was active for the Carrington event, which was the strongest solar storm impact we have ever recorded or observed. There've been some other strong ones 
as discussed on the channel, 1872, 1921, 1972, we had some near misses with this solar cycle also back in 2012. There's probably others that we were unaware of with our modern technology. Now we can really capture these events from the far side and the limbs of the sun. But this alignment perfectly coincides with the known strongest solar impact in recorded history. And we have a very similar one coming up in the beginning of 2026, right before that great conjunction of Saturn and Neptune, late February of 2026. So the big question right now is, what is 3i Atlas going to do during its perihelion? If anything, will it do an Oberth maneuver? Will it redirect to Earth? Will it redirect to Jupiter? We'll just have to wait and see, or will it just continue along and then participate in this incredible planetary geometry that we have coming up at the beginning of 2026? I don't know, but I'll track this as closely as I can to the best of my ability. So please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on what is happening. And in addition to that, what is happening energetically here on Earth with earthquakes, volcanic activities, Schumann resonance bursts, also solar activities, space weather, planetary resonances, alignments, cosmic forces, and more. I'm your guy, your cosmic bro. So thank you all so much for watching. Wishing each and every single one of you well. Have an amazing perihelion of 3i Alice. It is a very, very powerful time. Right now we have our full supermoon coming up beginning of November and those big sunspots will be earth facing at that time. So we also have that coming up, a big energy wave that is cresting and building at this moment. Thanks so much and have a great day.